devotional service. So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Uh, so, today's topic is Lord Chaitanya's instructions. Um, from Chaitanya Charita Amrita, it's, uh, the topic is uh, about the pure devotional service. Um, Guru Maharaj is going to start a, a series of lectures uh, from Chaitanya Charita Amrita. So, thank you all for joining. So I request everyone, um, please, um, if uh, can you, if you all can come come on camera, uh, that would be nice uh, to see everyone. Uh, Guru Maharaj would like to uh, have everyone on the cameras. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Guru Maharaj, you can take uh, Thank you. Okay, we'll need the verse. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay, so. Uh, this is, so we'll be um, discussing um, Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila chapter 22, and this is Lord Chaitanya's instructions to Sanatana Goswami, the chapter is on pure devotional service. And there's a series of verses, and so we'll start with this one. Uh, Krishna Bhakti Abhideya Sarva Shastra Koi Ateva Muni Goya Gaya Kariyacha Nischaya. A human being's activity should be centered only on devotional service to Lord Krishna. That is the verdict of all Vedic literature, and all saintly persons have confirmed, firmly con concluded this. Next verse. Hmm. Shruta Mata Pristi Shruti Mata Pristi Dasa Baba Ardia Nad with him. Shruti Mata Pristi Sati Baba Ardana with him. Yatu Mata Vanis Matir Apitata Vyakti Bagini. Pura Nagya Yeva. Sahaja Vihasa Petana Anuga Ata Satyam Jatam Murahara Bhavam Eva Sharanam Translation When the mother Veda Shruti is questioned as to whom to worship, she says that you are the only Lord and worshipable object. Similarly, the corollaries well, the Shruti Shastras, the Shruti Shastras give the same instructions, just like sisters. The Puranas are like, are like brothers mm -hmm. following in the footsteps of their mother. Mm -hmm. O enemy of the demon mother, the conclusion is that you are the only shelter. Mm -hmm. Now I have understood this truth. Mm -hmm. This quotation from the Vedic literature was spoken by the Lord, by great sages. <laughs> Next, Advaya Jana Sattva Krishna Swayam Bhagavan. Advaya Jana Tattva Krishna Swayam Bhagavan. Sarupa Shakti Tu Patanra Haya Asvatana. Krishna is the non dual absolute truth, the supreme personality of Godhead. Although he is one, he maintains different personal expansions and energies for his pastimes. Srila Prabhupada's purport. The Lord has many potencies and he is now different from all these potencies. Because the potencies and the potents cannot be separated, they are identical. Krishna is described as the source of all potencies and he is also identified with the external potency, the material energy. Krishna also has internal potencies or spiritual potencies, which are always engaged in his personal service. His internal potency is different from his external potency. Krishna's internal potency in Krishna himself, who is the potent, are always identical. Hmm. Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamma Yam Vedati Swam Vedati Kam. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale 
Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Ti Nami Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pujarine Nirvasesa Sunyavari Pasyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Be Bacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. Okay, you can take the verse off and bring us back to the, the live session there. Okay. So what we have here is um, um, a nice description of the absolute truth. The absolute truth is a person and he is one. There's nothing second. Not, there is nothing but Krishna and Krishna manifests himself as himself through his different incarnations, expansions, and energies. But Krishna is one. Um, and just like the example is given, the sun and the sunshine, the sun and the sunshine cannot be separated from each other because without the sun, there is no question of the sunshine. Without Krishna, there's no question of his energies, but his energies in him are simultaneously Achintya, which means inconceivable, beta beta tattva, one and different simultaneously. That is, although the sun and the sunshine are the same in one sense, in another sense they're different. One is the source, the other is the energy, but they're inseparable. It's like fire, you cannot separate heat and light from fire because that is the, the nature of fire. If you don't have heat and light, you don't have fire to some degree. So in the same way, Krishna's potencies are non-different than him. And they are at the same time different from him. But the uh, potencies of Krishna are always in line with Krishna's will. Therefore, they work according to his desire. The verse from the Sveta Svatara Upanishads is, Parashya Shakti Vidahaya Suyate Svavaviki Gyanavala Kriyacha. That he has many, many potencies and energies, sub energies, all carrying out his will, even for, for creation, for maintenance, for destruction, and for his leelas and his different pastimes. So Krishna is one, but he manifests his energies in so many different ways. But ultimately, there is nothing but Krishna, because you can't, you can't make a differentiation between him and his energy in one sense. But for the sake of devotional service, we do. We do. Just like you, uh, if you want to worship the Ganges, you take Ganges water and you offer prayers by pouring it back to the Ganges. The prayer is the offering, and the water belongs to the Ganges in the first place. So everything in existence is an energy of Krishna, either material or spiritual. When we say material, we say something that is cut off from the source. In the absolute sense of the term, there is no, no such thing as material. What is material? It's a particular energy that acts in a certain way, but at that same time, it is also eternal. What makes it material is that when it's cut off from its source, that is the actual definition of material. So you might say, well, yeah, but the material energy deteriorates and the spiritual energy doesn't deteriorate. That is correct, but that is in reference to the forms and not to the energy itself. As the material energy forms different forms from itself, it, it transmigrates or transforms into different forms from the different forms, but the ingredients remain the same. 
And even the scientists have concluded that matter cannot be created and destroyed. So matter cannot be created. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, or Krishna separated energies and they make up everything material. But in order for distinction, they are given that classification. But in, from the highest point of view, there is nothing material. Everything is spiritual. And what makes something spiritual is, again, when it's used back into the service of the Lord. For instance, um, there was an interesting kind of an argument between Srila Prabhupada and Dr. Patel. Dr. Patel was an interesting person. He met the devotees in 1973 in Bombay when Prabhupada was establishing the, uh, right after Prabhupada had established the Juhu temple in Bombay. And he really liked Prabhupada. And Prabhupada really appreciated him because he was always quite philosophical. And he would join the morning walks with Srila Prabhupada. And many times Prabhupada would speak something and he would take issue with what Prabhupada spoke. Sometimes the devotees would get a little upset <laughs> because here was a person who was coming and the devotees would never take issue with Prabhupada said. They may have questioned what Prabhupada said, but he would argue with Prabhupada sometimes. And Prabhupada would tolerate him and do his best to explain. So in one such case, uh, he, uh, Prabhupada said, the spiritual body, the spiritual master's body is fully spiritual. And, uh, and Dr. Patel said, yes, but not like Krishna's body, which is spirit. Prabhupada said, no, spiritual means spiritual. There's not two kinds of spiritual. So then the argument continued where Dr. Patel kept objecting to that idea. Finally, when Prabhupada concluded the argument, which convinced uh, Dr. Patel that what he was saying was the absolute truth, and that is, and he used the example and that when you take something and he used the example of an iron rod, if you put it into the fire, then by leaving it into the fire for a prolonged period of time, then that iron rod starts taking on qualities of fire. And after some time, it loses all its metallic qualities and acts simply like fire. The Prabhupada said, because the spiritual master, a pure spiritual master, is fully engaged in devotional service, his body is fully spiritualized. It is no longer considered to be matter. And, probably, and then Dr. Patel surrendered to that argument. And there are ac actually examples of that where great souls, their bodies, after they have left their bodies, has not deteriorated the slightest amount. And we see that in certain cases, there are examples in the Christian tradition and there's also been examples in the Vaishnava tradition where the body remains simply intact, even though it is still, the soul is gone. But that's for a highly spiritualized person. So this is an example how we can understand that everything material is actually spiritual when it's fully engaged in the service of the Lord. Because the service of the Lord is of the spiritual energy. Bhakti Devi is a manifestation of the spiritual energy, personified as pure devotional service, and it's the internal energy of Krishna. Sometimes we understand that as Srimati Radharani. She is Ladini Shakti, the internal pleasure potency of the spiritual energy. And so there is, so when the material substance, something in this material world is fully engaged in the service of Bhakti Devi, because it, in contact with that spiritual energy, it also becomes spiritual. That's why we say that, that the paraphernalia that we use for the deity 
is sometimes considered to be non-different than the Lord himself. And that means it is holy and totally spiritual. For example, we understand that uh, the Lord's uh, uh, jewelry, some of it, most of it, the Lord's artsy paraphernalia, the Lord's uh, clothing, the Lord's umbrella, his bedstead, his shoes. These are all manifestations of the internal energy personified by Lord Balaram, who transforms himself into these items in order to serve the uh, to serve Krishna in in these different ways. So we get a little example of how the energies are actually all spiritual, but acting in different ways, like that. So, so what is material is what is not used in devotional service or what is cut off for devotion, from devotional service. Of course, then you might say, what about things that are of the nature of sinful? Well, there actually is no paraphernalia that is actually sinful because everything is made from those ingredients. But a person can use these things in the wrong way and it appears to be sinful. Sometimes we talk about the definition of evil. Well, what is evil? Well, evil simply means an absence of good. Just like cold is an absence of heat. If you, if you go to 436 degrees, uh, my, minus 436 degrees Fahrenheit, you get absolute cold. That's a scientific study. So when you take coal and you bring it to the absolute point that there's not even a trace of any element, absolute coal in its highest percentage, then you have what is called cold. Well, what is that? It's simply an absence of heat, that's all. So evil is an absence of good, or we might even say an absence of God. It has no substance of its own. Or you might say sinful activity is simply an expression of an opposite reaction to devotional service. Therefore, it has no substance of its own. It's simply a negation of the reality, just like... <clears throat> Uh, just like a cloud covers the sun, but the sun is never covered, but the cloud appears to cover the sun. So the cloud cannot cover the sun because the sun is always in its position in the, in the, in the heavens. And at the same time, it appears from our point of view that the sun is covered. So ultimately, Krishna is never covered. He's always revealing himself. But because of the material energy, is, uh, is there, or that which is covering Krishna is our consciousness. So consciousness is what covers Krishna. But consciousness can't cover Krishna. It's wrong consciousness that covers Krishna. But pristine, pure consciousness, when it's in its natural, original form, reveals Krishna everywhere. Therefore, Krishna says, when you thus learn the truth, you'll know that all living beings are my parts and parcels. They're in the inner mind. One can see Krishna everywhere when they see that all the forms of the Lord are simply manifestations of Krishna in that particular form. That's all. So from the absolute point of view, which is the absolute truth, there is nothing but Krishna. <laughs> There is nothing but Krishna. Prabhupada gave a lecture one time to a large group of people. I think it was in India sometime. And he, was, he was, spoke a little bit different than he normally did. He was saying, you are Krishna. I am Krishna. We all are Krishna. There's nothing but Krishna. So this was a little shocking because Prabhupada would say anybody who says he's God is dog. But now he's saying we're all the all we're all Krishna. But then he qualified in, during the question and answer session by explaining that 
ultimately there is nothing but the Lord, but he manifests himself through his different energies and his energies from the material perspective, and we use that perspective, appear to be different than him, but they're not. So therefore everything is sacred because everything is an energy of the Lord. And we are also the energy of the Lord. We have no other identity than the Lord's energy. That's all we are. We are called Vivinamsa. The, uh, the, uh, the, the forms of the Lord are two, Swamsa and Vivinamsa. Swamsa is one, is that one manifests himself in many, but Vivinamsa is many. Each living entity is separate from every other living entity. Each living entity is an individual living entity. So Krishna creates his energies in different ways. Why does Krishna create so many living entities? What is the purpose of creating so many living entities? Well, the principle of his creation, so many living entities, is the principle of exchanging love or rasa, sweet relationships. So Krishna is eager, and we use that word very strongly, eager to have a loving relationship with each and every soul, because each and every soul is unique and different from, each, from any other soul. Just like even in the material realm, we see there are, they say there's no two leaves on the tree, any trees that have the same pattern. No two snowflakes that have the same structure. No two fingerprints have the same, same identity. No two voices are exactly the same. So you see, even on the material realm, there are diversities that are unique. So on the spiritual realm, that is also true because spiritual is actually the, the prototype or the original of material. So when material is diverse, you can see that it's, it's actually coming from the spiritual diversity. So each and every soul <clears throat> is unique. Many souls have similar natures. And sometimes we find two souls who have similar natures take birth together or uh, gravitate towards each other because of their similar natures. Uh, that comes sometimes by way of uh, by way of karmic activities, but then you see that that each and every soul has something about them that is not there in any other soul, and Krishna wants to taste that. <laughs> Krishna wants to taste that. He's greedy for love. He is. The, he is. The, sometimes they say God. He is the God of love. So he's always uh, wanting to taste that loving relationship with each and every soul because then he also knows that that's what the soul actually desires. We desire only Krishna. We don't desire anything else, but because we have somehow or other, our consciousness is covered with the material energy, we come up with these other desires, which are really not real. They're just manifestations of a desire that is not the actual desire. Just like if you have a hand and you cover it with a glove and you, the glove has the same shape as the hand, but the hand is the original. So in the same way, we have covered desires over our soul that are very similar to our spiritual desires, but at the same time, they're different. What, uh, what, is, what is the essential desire of the living entity is happiness. Mm -hmm. Happiness is the basic uh, feature of the living entity's existence. The living entity wants happiness and it wants it always. That's, uh, we might say, well, I'm not like that. Well, if you're not like that means you're covered by, uh, by illusion because you want happiness always. That is your nature. <laughs> If you say you want it part-time and not all-time, that means you're speaking from a material perspective. In other words, you're an illusion or you have, you're, you're exhibiting the uh, vibrations of an insane person. 
you want happiness constantly, we might use the word 24 <laughs> seven, just to give us a little <laughs> emphasis. So, and Krishna knows that, and he, he wants us to become happy also. So therefore he manifests himself and in the form of pure devotional service as the way to, again, reconnect with him in, in that eternal loving relationship. So, and we'll see how devotional service is in different gradations in this particular uh, chapter. We'll go through some of the more, some of the verses day by day, getting into the more uh, uh, subtle forms of devotional service and how devotional service works. But devotional service, as Prabhupada would say, is the only occupation of the living being. Our material occupations are ephemeral and they're external and they, they come and go according to the movement of the material time factor. They are not real in the sense that when something is uh, apparently real, but as I said, not real means it's material. According to the definitions given in Shastra, what is real is that which never changes. Something is that changes cannot be considered to be real or truth <laughs> because it, it appears one way at one time and then appears in another way at another time. And so which one is the correct way? Because well, both are incorrect because they are not real, but in the sense that they exist, but they can't be given the definition of truth because truth is something that doesn't change. Reality is something that is not affected by time. Therefore, no matter who we are or where we are or what situation we find ourselves in, we have an eternal loving relationship with Krishna and that can never be changed or never be uh, what we say lost either. It's always there. And you'll see there's one verse, which is in this particular chapter, comes up much later. It's spoken by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in relationship to Lord Chaitanya's teachings. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sarukabu Noi Sravanadi Siddhi Chitte Kodiye Udoi. That in the hearts of all living beings, pure love for Krishna exists. And when he says all living beings, he doesn't mean be beings that are in the human form only. He was referring to all life, no matter what form it takes, as is described that in the material realm, the soul can have one of one of 8,400,000 different species of life. And so in each and every one of those 8,400,000 species of life, no matter what forms it takes, that living entity has pure love for Krishna and can never be lost. They can never be changed. It can only be forgotten. But the advantage of the human form of life is rare. Because we see out of 8,400,000 species of life, um, there are 400,000 human forms of life. And out of the 400,000, there are only very few that are actually elevated and civilized. And only in those who have some type of intelligence can take to pure devotional service. So therefore we say, and this is mentioned, we don't say, Srila Rupa Goswami, enunciates this point in the nectar of devotion that pure devotional service or devotional service to the Supreme Lord is extremely rare, <laughs> extremely rare. So one who gets that opportunity is considered to be most fortunate. And you see, Srila Prabhupada in the mood of Lord Chaitanya and especially in the mood of Lord Nityananda are going at, went everywhere to give pure devotional service to anyone and everyone. How many people actually took it up? Very few in percentage wise and came in contact with Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada came in contact with millions and millions of people in this short 11 years that he was preaching devotional service. But very few took it up. 
Why? Because it's, it's not so easy to get. How do you get it? How do you get the opportunity for pure devotional service? Well, they say pure devotional service is causeless. That means there is no cause that can, that is the, the reason why you have been given pure devotional service or a chance for pure devotional service. So what is that causelessness? The causelessness has a cause. It's a cause, it's a cause, it's a causeless cause. <laughs> if that makes sense or at all. And what is that cause is cause? And that is the mercy of the, 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 the uh, pure devotee. Only by the mercy of the pure devotee does one actually get the opportunity for pure devotional service. That's why it's considered very rare. <laughs> and that mercy of course is coming from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who in this age is eagerly distributing that mercy, especially in the form of the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So these are some of the points that are being made in relationship to that verse. That Krishna's potencies are none different than him, and they're all absolutely working under his control. And from the absolute point of view, everything is spiritual. <clears throat> So we can uh, stop here and uh, Srimati can say a few words in relationship to what was said. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, for the, such a wonderful class. So you spoke about uh, the Lord's potencies and, uh, and also how they are related uh, to the living beings. And also you gave such nice examples uh, of sun and fire and light, sun and sunshine. So where we can relate uh, more about how Krishna and Krishna synergies are working and also you, uh, you spoke about our relationship uh, and especially I like the point where you said Guru Maharaj um, like it's our wrong conscience, uh, consciousness which covers the uh, which covers the Krishna, Krishna so we think that the material energy um, so how the material energy is covering Krishna Krishna is there but the material energy is covering Krishna so uh, no, no, yes. the material energy cannot cover Krishna. Yeah. Just like the sun, the clouds cannot cover the sun, but it so, appears like that. Yes, Karnaj, I, I spoke little. So then also you spoke about um, the relationships between uh, between us, uh, living entity and Krishna, and how we are going, how um, because of a pure devotee, we are coming into Krishna consciousness and our devotional service. And because of the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, we are all here today uh, talking about Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank so, devotees, if you have any questions or realizations, uh, you can please go ahead. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, this was a, a, a uh, Thanks for starting the series and, uh, and, and taking this wonderful verse from Chaitanya Charita Amrita Maharaj. Maharaj, I've taken a few notes and I've got two to three questions. Um, so the first question I had, Maharaj, is when you said that uh, everything apart, uh, you said not everything uh, of the Lord Paraphernalias uh, is Lord Balaram. So are there any exceptions to this? Because I, I thought that every all the paraphernalia of the Lord is an expansion of Lord Balaram. Um, well, um, there is a statement that uh, the jewelry that the Lord uses, some of it is actually Lord Balaram and some of it is not. So um, that statement has come up without an explanation. Now, obviously, that means that some of that jewelry is either uh, costume jewelry or not real jewelry. <laughs> okay, thank you, Maharaj. That's um, my that's my uh, 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 understanding of that statement because I've heard it from senior devotees many times, and that's also mentioned uh, that that's the, some of the jewelry, not all of the jewelry, is ball around like that. You're talking about the direct paraphernalia now. Yeah. Yeah. The 
the stuff that the, the the items that are used in his worship. Yeah, generally they're all Balaram, but in this one case, some of the jewelry is not. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, there is the second uh, point that I would uh, appreciate, Maharaj, if you can kindly clarify, and this is. Uh, there are so many, in my understanding, from what I understand um, from reading Srila Prabhupada's books, that we have so many variegatedness in the material world because of the desires of the individuals. And to fulfill that desires, that there are different material forms, because in those forms, the desires can be fulfilled, and because of karma as well. But then you said that it is also because Krishna wants to taste various rasas. So... Can you please, Maharaj, uh, clarify that? I didn't understand, because uh, you did explain about that, but I, I didn't get it. Uh, it seems like there's a number of points you made, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to see what is the actual question in relationship to your statement. So, so my question is that, is there variegatedness in the material world because of the desires of individuals uh, for, for because it is because the individual's desires get fulfilled through various material bodies, and that's why there is variegatedness. Or is it because Krishna wants to taste various rasas in those different forms? With uh, well, on, the on, on the material level, hmm. Krishna is only tasting that variegatedness through pure devotional service. On the material level, Prabhupada, just like Prabhupada said, a living entity. Will well, I want to eat all kinds of abominable things. So that desire to eat all kinds of things, well, needs this particular body to fulfill that. So the human body is not uh, arranged for that. So therefore, uh, they'll get a body suitable, such as a body of a hog. And Prabhupada was talking about that today. And one lecture I was listening to, he was saying, if one wants to run around naked, the human form of life is not meant for that. The human form of life means to cover. And so if one is acting that way in the human form of life, then Krishna will say, oh, we'll give this, the living entity, a body of a tree. You can stand without any clothes on and nobody will take exception. So according to the material desires, the living entity creates his next body according it's actually happening at the time of the desires because we're actually formulating a particular consciousness and that consciousness is manifesting in the actual body we have so um, you'll see if a person by nature is evil you can see that they They'll, the, their physical characteristics will also exhibit that. If a person is happy, their physical characteristics will exhibit that also. So um, you're, we're actually formulating, transforming our consciousness through med different material desires, which are affecting the, the body we have. And that is moving itself in a certain direction. And at the time of death, that karma has culminated and which will manifest into the next body like that. So karma uh, material uh, laws are very exact. You, know, you can't get around them. So karma is very, very exact. According to consciousness and activities, one formulates a certain type of body which will manifest gradually during the time of our life and then ultimately at the time of death. Mm -hmm. you know, and like that. Now, Krishna can only taste or will only taste that rasa. That rasa or mellows or exchange is in the, in the realm of devotional service. There is no such thing as a material rasa with Krishna. <laughs> You can't have a material rasa with Krishna because Krishna is holy and totally spiritual and material simply means something that is cut off from him or it's his energy, but it's, but it's opposite. It takes one away from Krishna, not towards Krishna. 
Thank you, Maharaj. That that clarifies because I was taking it in the same context, but it's different. Thank you. Mm -hmm. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, only by pure devotional service can I be known. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. I have a Thank last point to make, but if, there, if, if there's no other further questions and if there's time, then I can ask Maharaj. Okay, we'll see if there's any other questions. Uh, devotees, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, raise your hand or uh, you can just unmute and uh, talk. Hare Krishna. Mataji, I have my question. Yeah, sure, Mataji. Go ahead. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, Dhanu Pranam, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Aparapa. Um, Guru Maharaj, yeah, please, please increase your volume. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Sorry, Guru Maharaj. When I do it on Guru, work automatically. Voices, you know. I'm sorry, I'll try. You can come a little closer to the uh, computer, Mataji. Yeah, is it okay now? Yeah, um, it's better. Yeah, so, sorry, one second, I'm sorry. Uh, so, Kumar, my question is like, uh, um, as you mentioned, like uh, anything which is not connected to Krishna is meditation. Hey, yeah, so anything uh, which is uh, not connected to Krishna is material, and anything which is connected to Krishna is spiritual. Um, so, just my understanding so, this is like at a subtle level. We have like subtle body and gross body. So body is also material, right? A good one. So uh, when we connect to Krishna, so the gross body will also become spiritualized or like it's only consciousness. Yeah. Now, and let me, let's just qualify that statement. Okay. Everything is connected to Krishna. But when we talk about actual connection with the personality of God and we talk about the process of devotional service but Krishna says everything is my energy so therefore everything is connected to Krishna but the reciprocation is only by devotional service so when you use your physical body in devotional service as we mentioned that one example mm -hmm. that Prabhupada was discussing with Dr. Patel then it also becomes spiritualized. And when you're fully engaged in devotional service, your body is no longer material, it's spiritual. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and we use the example as you put the iron rod in the fire, it becomes like fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's full devotional service. That means my body, mind, and words. Um, Sabai pumsam paro dharma pito bhakti ahok sajay hoituki priyata yayatma supusi bhati. When one is fully engaged in devotional service without any desires for personal gain or without cessation, that is pure devotional service and that is perfection. And then one is in contact fully with the spiritual energy. And as one develops their consciousness in that devotional service, Krishna reveals himself more and more to the person according to their level of devotion. And as, the, as one continues in that absorption, then uh, one becomes more and more purified and one becomes more and more absorbed in Krishna. In the beginning of devotional service, we more or less are we're fixed upon the service. When we get more advanced in Krishna consciousness, we're more fixed on Krishna. The service is still there, but then everything is about Krishna. In the beginning, we don't have so much understanding of Krishna. We simply are doing the activities, and it's devotional service. But we mostly focus on the activities and not so much on Krishna. But that will, as that develops, then Krishna becomes more and more the conscious uh, entity of the living entity. And it's all about Krishna. Mm -hmm. Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you. His name, his fame, his form, his qualities, his pastimes, mm -hmm. his pure devotees, these are all the internal energies of Krishna. Mm -hmm. Krishna, mm -hmm. Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you. Just one more confirmation, I just want to make sure if my understanding is right. Um, soul and body, right, Guru Maharaj? So both are different. Uh, soul, uh, so mostly like we depend on the consciousness, like subtle level. So, can we perceive Krishna without this material body? Like, mostly we are connecting to Krishna through consciousness. We are trying to improve consciousness. The consciousness is spiritual. It's not spiritual, material. But material, yeah. So, still we need this material body to connect to Krishna. Only in the material world. Only in the material Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as it, as long as the soul is in the material world, it has to have a material body. Okay. But when it's out of the out of the material world, then it then it's 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 automatically connected to Krishna. Okay. Okay. Or at its its least, it's uh, it's free from all material encumbrances encumbrances. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. But. The material body is necessary as long as we're in the material world. <laughs> yes, so you're using this body to connect to Krishna. So well, the body is not connecting, the soul is. Oh, yes, soul is connecting, but with the help of the material body, since soul is in the yeah. body, you're using it. With the help of the mind and the intelligence and the senses directed in devotional service, the connection is made. Yes, Guru yes. When the intelligence directs the mind and the mind directs the senses and the senses engage in activity, that is devotional service. Mm -hmm. The intelligence it means uh, how to serve Krishna in the, in the mood of devotional service. And the mind carries it out using this, the help of the senses. Okay, okay. That's good. Yes, I got it. Thank you so much, Guru Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, uh, Guru Maharaj. Even I had that type of question uh, I was about to ask. Um, so I just want to make one more small confirmation that uh, so the mind is a materialistic mind. And um, so to, to purify that, uh, we are in the process of devotional service and to purify, as you said, intelligence, mind. Um, so we are in this process of devotional service and by chanting, we are turning this materialistic mind uh, um, into spiritual or into pure consciousness or purifying. Is that the thing? Right. Yeah. Okay. right. Materialistic mind is simply a covering over the, over the real mind. Mm -hmm. There is a spiritual mind mm -hmm. and the material mind is the covering over the material. Just, and so that covering dissipates or dissolves. And then the spiritual mind uh, uh, is revealed. Yes. Everything material is ephemeral and is subject to destruction or de or the disintegration. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. And when you were saying that uh, a material substance, when comes into contact uh, with uh, the Lord, it becomes spiritual and it is Lord's paraphernalia. So uh, can we say that um, this the deity form of Lord, like made with metal or uh, wood or uh, stone, uh, this also can be treated like uh, what you said, um, like they are becoming spiritual because... Uh, no, they, they are, are spiritual. They are already spiritual. Mm -hmm. Our vision is not spiritual. Okay. Yeah. When Lord Chaitanya heard one person making a distinction between Jagannath's body and Jagannath, he said, the body of Jagannath and, and Jagannath, the Lord Chaitanya became very angry mm. because the body of Jagannath is also Jagannath. It's completely spiritual. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking like, um, 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 when we said so, before it's making- not so easy. It's not so easy to understand. Yeah, before, by our uh, making, um, before getting into the DT form, um, the wood or the stone or the metal, it's a material thing. And uh, that's why when it, when it is made into the DT form, 
then then it becomes spiritual i thought <laughs> when when it's when the worship begins then it begins then yeah. it's spiritual yes yeah and in the in 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 the in the, uh, in the temples we do a thing called prana pratishta. Prana pratishta means there's a ceremony that calls the Lord to into the deity, and then that deity is eternally the Lord. Before then, it's not. But once the prana prana pratishta is engaged, and then it begins. Now, for home worship deities, um, the prana pratishta is the time element. And that mm -hmm. means that through a period of extended time in worship, the deity manifests himself as non different than Krishna. And that's due to the, due to, that's due to the desire of the worshiper. Mm -hmm. So it's a little different for home deities. Mm -hmm. But both are, both are non different than their forms. If you think the deity is made of, is is stone or wood, then you you are what is called Arche Vishnu Siddhi Guru Shunomurti. You're seeing you're seeing in a materialistic way. Yes, the, de the deity is fully transcendental and it's spiritual. Yeah. One dev one devotee was traveling into one Muslim country. And he came into the airport and he was there in a layer for a connecting flight. So one very senior airport person who was also Islamic, he came up to him, knowing him, he said, why do you worship God as stone? Uh, and the devotee said, we don't worship God as stone. We, we worship God within stone. God appears within the stone and not the stone is God. Hmm. Yeah. Let's go, I understood. Hmm. Thanks so much. Hmm. Uh, so devotees, any more uh, questions or comments? I think uh, Diptish Prabhu, you can go ahead with your question. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj. I think Maharaj, it's a comment when you said at the end of the lecture that devotional service is very rare. And uh, when we are trying to give Krishna or preach Krishna consciousness with our near and loved ones, and when they seem to appear indifferent and not interested in Krishna's pastimes or names, we get, or at least I get very disheartened and disappointed. But then this point um, is so true that Krishna consciousness and devotional service is rare. Yeah. It's, it's uh, only those who are, only those who are fortunate can understand. And even those who take it up, very few actually reach the, reach the goal of devotional service. So just Manusanam Sahasri Shu. Yeah, that yeah. verse from the third. Manusanam Sahasri Shu. Yeah, yeah. What is that? What's the second line? Manusanam Sahasri Shu. Yastit Kitsu Siddhaye. Yatatam Abhisidhanam Kastyad Mam Veti Yeah. Krishna says, hardly, you know, so many people take it up and so many people actually reach a certain stage. But how many actually very reach perfection? And even those who reach perfection, how many? He said, hardly even one knows me in truth. To know Krishna is practically impossible. But the idea is that there's nothing else to go for in life. Everything else, everything else in life, you lose. This is the one thing that you can't lose. Even if you don't make it in this life, you're on your way. Next life will be where you start off and eventually you'll reach success. There's no other goal. Material goals are just, uh, you know, temporary 
and always filled with uh, combinations of happiness and distress. <laughs> Mostly distressed. <laughs> it's just like you love your parents, and obviously they love you, but you can't understand why they don't understand Krishna. <laughs> so that's that's distressful for you. <laughs> you want because you love them, you want to share something that is wonderful with them and help them understand the value, but they can't for whatever reason. And therefore, it's frustrating <laughs> in that sense. That was it, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Me. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but because you're a devotee, they will get some benefit automatically. It's called the Gyata Sukriti. That Agyatu Sukriti will manifest in due course of time. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Um, I think um, any more questions, devotees? Um, we are just almost reaching the one of our time. Okay, so we'll be with you tomorrow again. Tomorrow night I have a program which I have to go to right after our class tomorrow night. So we'll have our class from five, from four to five, and then right after that. And so, uh, yeah, we'll continue on with this particular section. And it gets more and more interesting as this goes on. That's good, match. Yeah. And, and the, the interesting part is that this, these are the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. So. so um, shall we end the call here? Or, um, it's almost one hour. Good, Maharaj. You're the host. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, there are no more questions now. So I think... Uh, uh, we can end the call here, Guru Maharaj, if you or otherwise, um, as you said, we can um, we can do one round of chanting um, if you are. Um, yeah. If devotees are into it, we can do a round of chanting. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Sure.